Alrighty, it is time to finally release the first version of my Dark Dimension 3 guide. Uh, so you may remember me from the previous one, the Dark Dimension 2 guide, with the wave orders and the kill orders. And just to show you, I am only partway through Dark Dimension 3. I'm still on node 12, uh, about halfway done with it, but I'm making some good progress, and I should be starting City pretty soon. So like I said, this is a work in progress. So if we flip over to the guide, it's in a Google Excel sheet uh, this time instead of a Word document. So it's a little bit different format, but I'll walk you through what we did uh, to make this available and easy to read. And we'll go through some of those items and different sheets today. And if you have questions or you think we could do something better or have some content that we should add to it, just let me know. You can hit me up on Discord. My contact info is here in the intro tab. Uh, you can also see me on YouTube, which is where this channel this video is hosted as well as twitch and i do stream uh, every other night when i hit dd3 as well as doing some other stuff and uh, general msf shenanigans so let's dive in uh, the first tab here is really just an explanation of how the guide works uh, as we get other translations or other resources that may be useful to link here i'll probably link them here in the intro uh, tab but we'll see what comes up in the past, uh, the DD2 guide that I made was actually translated into several other languages for French and Russian and I think Chinese. Um, but there's several uh, languages that are pretty popular that are not English for MSF players. So I'm sure we'll have some interest in translating some of these. Um, we may have some improvements to the guide to make that easier. I know that other um, sorts of uh, Marvel Strike Force content uses uh, you know, language keys and everything, like the roster organizer that Zarathos puts on, um, that has uh, the keys for different languages. So we may try to implement that for this guide. Uh, but for right now, I just wanted to get this out there because I know a lot of people are in DD3 and I wanted people to be able to start using it um, just to get through the first 12 nodes. Um, really, that's about as much information as I have right now. So I don't really have the city info. And uh, we're trying to get that from other streamers that are already in city, uh, but we should be there pretty Pretty soon so uh, I'll just fill it in as I go so for now you may just want to you know refer to the link in the description uh, which has a link to this guide and then as it gets updated you'll see those updates because it's you know a live spreadsheet so uh, the second tab here is just general tips and strats for the game. Uh, this is going to be updated quite a bit as we get more information. Uh, certain nodes have different notes on them uh, in the node waveguide. But for this, this is just a lot of general information about how to do Dark Dimension 3. Uh, some just general information on you know different strategies using Phoenix as you know the 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 workhorse of the first eight nodes uh how to how to do um sacrifices how to um you know manage your your team's uh, health and availability uh like one one tip for instance is that you know as long as you start your attack prior to your midnight reset um it, they you can finish it and then when you finish if you've gone past your midnight reset uh, your team will be full healed again so i've used that a few times when i've run out of time at the end of the day and i've had to uh, just accept whatever my last attack was and in those cases sometimes it's best just to use your basics and keep your energy for a better attack when you have more time to actually work on it and try to get the right uh, set of actions to happen in order for you to get further through the node so this is going to get updated a little bit more. I haven't put a whole lot of effort into this tab yet, um, just because I've been focused mostly on the presentation of the wave information. So this is the wave guide. This is nodes 1 through 16, all nice and neatly uh, portioned out here with all the information that we have so far. Uh, so let me walk you through what this looks like. So for node one here, it is no trait restrictions. The total health is 8.4 million. The total enemies is 20. Uh, right now there's 20 remaining on this current use of it uh, in this spreadsheet. Uh, the difficulty I reckon, I would say, I, I would, I would, guess this is an easy node for most people it really depends on your roster your red stars and the characters you bring in but generally in my experience i would i would rate this as an easy node and i've i've rated each of the nodes just a little bit here just to give some information 
The other thing that's interesting is the average health of characters in each node. And all this is is a product of total health divided by the number of enemies. That gives us 420k health per character. However, that is not that does not mean every character is 420k health. A character could be a million health and another one could be 250k. Uh, it really varies and you can always go into the pause menu and check and see how much health they have, how much attack uh, power they have, uh, what's their speed, what's their resistance, and what's their focus. Uh, all those stats are in the pause menu for each individual character. And I do encourage you to check that sometimes when you're trying to choose targets. Uh, if you don't have tons of burst damage, you may want to focus on somebody with a lower health pool that may be easier to kill rather than somebody with a higher one. So if you do want to make a copy of this and pull it over to maybe your own sheets or your own Google Drive, uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, however, you won't be getting updates when you do that. But for now, uh, one of the nifty things I've added here is this checkbox option. So as you go through the node and you're killing enemies, if you'd like, you can use this. If you don't, if you don't, you know, all you care about is just seeing the wave information, that's fine too. Uh, but if you really want to be technical with it and keep track of what you're doing, you can click these little check boxes here. And if you notice, it'll make them black with the white outline so you can see what, what the people were, but those are the ones that you've killed. So if you've killed these characters in the node, you'll see your enemies remaining goes down. And the other interesting thing is um, with these next wave drops when X is remaining, well, I know that it's 15 remaining. So when I hit 15 here, then this wave's going to drop. Now, I will say, though, the wave drops are not entirely consistent in this mode. Um, we've seen people get partial drops here and there. Uh, I've experienced that before. I've had attacks where you know I get two of three expected drops in a wave I finish the fight a little bit and die and then I come back in the next day and the third guy just shows up randomly we've also seen the opposite where you know you kill one guy and a couple drop in and then you lose you die without killing anyone else you come back in and one or two of those guys just disappears for no reason and we don't know why we're not sure we don't have the logic behind it uh, if there is any but this is just a way of helping you keep track of what you've done. So if you killed a couple of these guys, if you killed four, you're down to 16, you come back into this uh, this attack um, you know, the next day, you know, maybe you want to think about, well, if I kill Mysterio, I can leave his clones on the board, right? And you know, there's two clones that pop up. Well, that's you know two more characters, so I'd really be at 17. I can kill two more of these guys before the next wave drops. So you really got to look at the number in your game what that shows how many are remaining in the in the node because those little summons will actually count towards this next wave drop number but as you can see here uh, as you click through these guys you'll you'll see the numbers change and I think this is a really easy way of tracking your progress, especially in some of the later nodes. Uh, this one's really easy because there's only three waves and there's only 20 enemies to, for the first node, right? That one's pretty easy to remember where you're at. Um, in the later ones, there's some with 45 enemies. And trying to remember, you know, which wave you're on of, you know, a node that has, say, 11 wave drops and several of them are the exact same drops is really difficult and so for me i've been tracking my progress in say node 12 for instance uh, where i am i have 21 enemies remaining and i killed these ones and just as an example i have enemies from three different waves on the board right now because these five guys just dropped in and these five guys are still on the board so i have a full slot a slate of 10 guys i need to kill and where i'm at right now is with 21 left um, I can see I'm on wave five. Well, I can kill seven of them or six of them. And then the next guy will be the 14 remaining. And that would drop the next wave with wasp wasps and strife. So I think this is a really helpful way of, you know, managing your wave drop information and where you are in the nodes. Um, but, you know, like I said, you don't have to use this. Maybe you just want to see the wave drops and, and get an idea where you're at just from looking at your total number remaining. You know, if you don't want to track it with the checkboxes, I think this row right here, this red row, really tells you where you're at in the waves. So that can kind of give you a little bit better idea of what's coming up next. Uh, so on some of these nodes, and I haven't finished all this, I put in kill priorities. And all this is is just, I, I didn't want to go through the full, you know, 
wave by wave, kill this, kill that, kill this, kill that uh, kind of mode. What I'm doing is I'm putting in kill priorities and really just priority targets. However, depending on your squad, and it's going to vary greatly because you know we're all at the mercy of the supply stores and the orb drops. We, you know, we're not going to be able to pick and choose exactly who we want to bring to tier 14. It's going to be really difficult to do that your first run. And, you know, I'm just scooting by with, uh, I had five globals, four cosmics, and currently have three city guys at tier 14. And I don't think I'm going to get another before I finish. Um, it's just, it's so much gear and so many resources. So the thing is, depending on who you've brought, whether they were good decisions or bad decisions, and I'm sure we all have some regrets if we're already in DD3. <laughs> Um, it's going to vary and your makeup is going to change based on what you can do. So if you brought like Mordo and you've got heal blocks and cosmic, well, that makes it a lot easier for you to ignore healers as long as you time your heal blocks out there, uh, when they're about to do their AOE heals, right? So you could probably ignore somebody like Shuri, who I would prioritize if I didn't have a heal block and try to get them down and maybe you focus somebody else. So that's just an example. This is only meant to be... A suggestion this is not you know gospel or anything kill whoever you want remember the part of dd3 that is fun is trying to figure it out for yourself and strategize your way through it it is really tough it is just beating your head against a wall sometimes because it's just so ungodly difficult but the fact is you know part of it is like when you figure out those big breaks that get you from wave to wave to wave and you get a good run going those are what feel great that's the best gaming experience of dd3 and so if you don't care about the kill priorities don't worry about it just ignore it i've also put in some strain uh, some sinister clone targets uh for just ideas on guys that you could pick in this node that would help you uh, a bit more than just anybody for instance <laughs> sometimes though you don't get to choose your strange clone uh, or I'm sorry, not strange, a <laughs> sinister clone, because basically you're going to be stuck on a taunt or something like that. Like, uh, I know there's one way or one node where you get a bunch of stripes and you just have to pick one because that's, that's just the opening couple of moves, right? Um, it just happens. You got to figure it out. You got to feel your way through it. Sometimes you got to make an attack, fail, quit out, come back in, retry and keep on going until you figure out what the right turn order is if you ever see me in stream i usually spend 30 minutes on an attack just trying to figure out what the best set of circumstances is for me and my team in order to get through sometimes it's just sitting there and basic attack for an entire attack die and come back in with everything loaded and ready to go so that i can make a big push uh, it really just depends on your situation but as you scroll through these, you'll see, uh, like Node 2, um, there's not a whole lot of priority targets. I mean, a lot of the times these characters are going to repeat throughout the nodes. Um, so I've tried to highlight some of those that are really important. I didn't think Node 2 was all that difficult, so I didn't really go through and read red highlight too many of these characters. Uh, some are annoying, like Star-Lord, Jessica Jones, and Miss Marvel are all annoying because they generate a ton of energy. Um, and they do it pretty quickly because, uh, you know, like Star-Lord's a very fast character. Miss Marvel's assists are pretty annoying on a lot of these characters. Um, but the idea is you just want to get through some of these that are difficult and keep on pushing. Um, there are some notes here, like for instance, in Node 2, Captain Marvel doesn't heal her normal amount of HP on her passive uh, each turn. She only healed about 5% of her health instead of the normal 20 when her uh, passive is max. So that's actually really important to know because, you know, I went into this node thinking, oh my god, how am I going to kill a Captain Marvel without heal block, right? They're, they're really fast. They're just, she's just going to keep healing. And then once I got into it and started fighting, I was like, oh, well, that's that's not so bad. I can, I can out heal that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it just kind of depends on the nodes but there's some notes um for instance node three is terrible it was awful when i went through it um probably a long time ago i started in end of february i'm on almost three months of dd3 now and i'm only about to finish cosmic um <laughs> so you gotta think here um you know some of these are pretty awful uh setups like the miss marvels getting all of the assists on all of these brawlers and then the black panthers getting extra turn meter every time miss marvel kills somebody with them um or if they killed somebody on their own uh, i've had my whole team wiped by a black panther in this node and had to reset and go back and try it again and over and over and over again until i figured out what the right turn order was sometimes it was just send in phoenix let her die try to get her special off and then come back with the full team to change the turn order 
order and get a better set of, of uh, enemy turns. But it just it varies a ton. So I think this is pretty self-explanatory from here. Uh, I just want to walk through some of that. Uh, let me show you what some of the other tabs that we're using uh, will do. So right now, and this is a big uh, data collection process right now, but we're trying to grab all of the health, damage, speed, armor, all that stuff of every enemy per node, because the health is going to vary on each node and uh, their damage is going to vary based on their stars and power and all that. Um, so we're just trying to get that information and have it here for reference. Uh, and then we're going to probably hook up some sort of uh, behind the scenes stats uh, page or whatever with the names, you know, connected and then do like V lookups on the nodes over here. So we'll be replacing these names. Uh, that's just a long term process uh, we're not doing that right away but we need to gather all that information first and then we can start linking it and uh, that information may be pretty helpful but if not just um, you know go to the stats page go to the node you're looking for and check it out uh, and you can get a lot of good information on here we've been a little bit more diligent about it later in these nodes um, but it's it is a bit of work and uh, we'll fill it in as we can uh, but it'll take a little bit of time so like i said work in progress uh, I am building a team building document into this at uh, this particular guide uh, for right now I'm just focused on the DD3 stuff and so I just have some comments about how to build your teams some common successful teams of course this is you know a very open-ended game you know there's 130 plus characters uh, pick the team that you want but this is just meant to be ideas on who is really important so, I mean, obviously, uh, Phoenix is absolutely necessary for global. Spider-Man symbiote is absolutely necessary for uh, city. And I think Hela is really necessary for cosmic. Uh, I would say all three of those are absolute necessities and essentials for Dark Dimension 3. After that, I think you get into like second tier characters like Colossus really helps Phoenix, but isn't absolutely necessary. Sinister is a lot of fun to play with. I love playing with Sinister, um, but he's not a necessity. Uh, Shuri, I think, is an excellent choice. Scientist Supreme could be really good. It just kind of depends on your roster. If you don't have good red stars on these characters, at least four or higher, then they probably aren't going to survive very long. So it kind of negates their purpose if they can only, you know, uh, do one turn and then die <laughs> so you gotta think about that too when you're doing your team building um but yeah some of the other ones that are really good i would say uh loki and hella pair really well together i think sif is a good choice because she's relatively cheap to tier 14 if you're going to bring hella and loki and maybe thor as well uh, minerva is really good as a healer especially with all the hella greg deaths um, so when greg dies uh, minerva gets that passive turn meter of 20 or 25 percent if you max her passive i actually maxed my minerva's passive just to help get through uh, a little faster and get her more energy uh, and when the enemy keeps killing Gregs over and over and over again, man, that helps. It makes Minerva's ult so much faster to get off, and it really makes a big difference. So I think she's essential for Cosmic. Black Bolt, I'm kind of on the fence about. I don't have him for Cosmic right now. I don't have him at Tier 14, and I don't plan to Tier 14 him until I finish DD3 once, uh, just because of my gear crunch right now. Um, but from what I've heard from other players, he's really good to have. However, um, he needs a support, supporting cast uh, to let him do his thing. Uh, he does have long uh, regens on his uh, energy and for his abilities and without yo-yo because she's global, um, you're not getting those energy feeds from her. So he's kind of hit and miss, I would say. Uh, I think he's still probably top tier. It's just the problem with him is the bio gear. So you really need Symbiote, Spider-Man, and Carnage for City, from what I understand. I haven't gotten there yet. I plan to be there very soon, probably in the next week. Um, but those two guys take the same amount of bios as Black Bolt. And so if you need, if you don't have a lot of bio gear, it's going to be really tough to get the three of them up. So I would focus on Symbiote and Carnage first, and then if you have the gear, get Black Bolt later. But Black Bolt's also amazing in every other area of the game, so it's really hard to say no to him to Tier 14. But if it makes you delay getting through City by a few weeks, then maybe it is worth it to skip him and go for the guys that help you get through City. Um, some other ones, I just put trait priorities in here. So that means for like global, for instance, I would say Phoenix is number one, Colossus is two, Shuri is three, and I would say Sinister is four. Um, global 
uh, is going to be heavy on mutants, so you might as well get your best mutants in there and use them. Uh, I think those are the top three mutants for sure. And then, you know, there's a handful of other ones that are kind of the, the third tier that would be good as well. Uh, but some of them are really expensive, like Magneto. Um, other ideas, uh, you know, I'm just doing DD3 grades on sort of a letter scale system here. But these are just my opinion. They aren't all that great, um, you know, as a guide for your roster because maybe you got a seven red star yo-yo and you're just like well yeah of course i'm going to take her to global you know <laughs> and that's fine but she's more bios that you got to use and a whole lot of them so that's that's going to hurt your city team um but the idea is just to show some of these that are really high priority and then you can just figure out the rest right there's not really necessarily five for every trait i would say there's about two to three and then after that it's a little bit gray <laughs> at least at this point uh, for city I, you know i think ghost rider is a really good one since the merc rework i think merc lt is an excellent one to take to tier 14 um, giving the offense up speed up and uh energy every other turn is just going to be awesome so he's he should be pretty solid as a uh, third guy for the symbiotes to work with uh, if you got the extra mystic gear after doing all your cosmics sure ghost rider is an excellent choice uh, but mystic is really heavy on cosmic characters um, so you just got to be careful and make sure you're weighing your your resources correctly there's other guys that could be good um, the more i learn from other people who've been through it with these different characters the more i'll add here and just try to add some color in the notes as to why i made these recommendations uh, but it really is going to come down to what you want to do uh, last couple of tabs we got here we have an entire daily progress tracker so this is mine currently so as i stream um, i've been tracking the amount of days the node that it was on how many attacks it took what characters were used uh, did we get the phoenix special or alt off for these first eight nodes uh, what's the raw damage done so that's the amount of damage you did on your score when you back out and you see your damage done that attack the fact is you have to compare that to how much damage is left on the node or the health left on the node because if they heal during it you're going to do more damage than is actually done to the overall node's health um, so there's an equation there to figure out you know okay Okay, what's the current uh what was the current damage then what is it now and then what did you do and then subtract that out uh, you can do enemies remaining as well if you want to copy this just clear out my data and uh, do your own as you go through it uh, it could be a lot of fun just to track it and see where you're at uh, and then the total node damage overall is uh pretty interesting too um, but yeah and then total damage per an attack and as you can see here, finished it on this one. So that's where we get to 100% total damage and zero remaining. And then how much healing was done on that node in those attacks, uh, just to figure out the total damage versus the remaining health. So, uh, and then total characters used. <laughs> so some cool stuff here. We've also been tracking some uh, Dark Dimension 3 streamers to see how they've been doing and what sort of attacks they've been doing. Um, so you can see here, I started um, the earliest out of this bunch actually uh, on February 20th uh, with five characters. I spent 32 days in the, uh, let's see, uh, I guess it was the non-trait nodes and then 27 in global. And then I'm, I'm currently going through cosmic, which I think is about the same. So I've been, you know, uh, averaging about one month per four nodes. Um, Grant, I didn't take the best teams. Uh, I've learned a lot since I've started, and I've been trying to put that into the team building guide. But uh, you can see here, it took me 74 attacks to get through the uh, non-trait nodes. But of those, I used Phoenix Solo, uh, 22 of those attempts, in order to do the 20% off damage uh, with her Dark Phoenix special. So what we're looking at here is uh, just overall how much cores were spent to revive characters and just get an idea of what other people have done um, and see where they are in the runs. Um, some of the bugs have been fixed since like me and Wolverthor started. Um, we had the issue of dealing with uh, Black Panther's passive, giving double turn meter and America Chavez healing people on spawn. Uh, it was a real pain in the ass, to be honest, and, and I didn't really like that. Uh, a couple other things, just trying to track some bugs that we encounter throughout DD3. I've only got a couple on there now that are currently active, but if you find any and uh, you'd like to let me know, I can throw it in here just to see and we'll maybe make a post about it on Reddit for the devs. Uh, and the last thing is the to-do list of just stuff to do. Um, so I plan on adding the DD2 waveguide in here as well and maybe DD1 if I get time. Um, Going to add city information once we get it um, and then adding 
links to all the character speed and stat information like I mentioned earlier. Um, there's a lot of things I think we could do with this guide, but for right now I think the bulk of it is of course the DD3 nodes. So a lot of good information in here, a lot of uh, a lot of just time tracking all of this and trying to dump all this into a document. So I hope people find some good information in here. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get a lot of good use out of it. And I hope it makes your DD3 life experience much, much better because I have learned a lot and uh, I would re not recommend taking the teams I took into DD3. It definitely sent me back a little ways just because I spent orange gear on guys that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and I could have done a better job of managing that. So, you know, if you're not in DD3 yet or you're just starting out, make sure you go to the team builder thing, figure out what what's the optimal stuff that you can work on right now. Where are you in your gear? And try to figure out which way to go before, you know, applying those mini uniques to characters that you may not actually need. It is quite, quite... Uh, difficult to undo any of that because it's weeks and weeks and weeks of farming to get a guy to tier 14 but uh thanks for watching i appreciate it i hope you all enjoy this and uh come see me on youtube and twitch and come hang out we also play other games and jackbox and all sorts of stuff so y'all have a good night and cheers <laughs>